Hi, and welcome to part two of the Siesta webcast series. In this session, we'll look at how a test is structured, and we'll also see how the testing harness can be configured and see how it runs in the browser. So looking at the Siesta folder, if you open it in your IDE, you should see something like this. Uh, if you open the examples folder, you'll see there are some basic assertions, there's XJS tests and a few other folders. This is very good for getting up to speed very quickly. And uh, in the basic XJS folder, you can see three JavaScript files that are tests. You can also see the index.html file, which is the application in itself. And it includes the index.js file, which configures the harness. So looking at the harness file, you'll see we configure it with a title and we also define which files to include for each test. So for the tests below, we'll load ext all CSS and also ext all debug and we're just using the Sencha CDN online. So once that is done, we can call harness.start and we tell the harness about our group structure for our tests. So here you can see we have an items, an items array with either strings or objects. So a string is uh, naturally a simple URL and the object can be defined with a URL as well as a preload array that overrides the array on the, on the harness level. So this means that you can specify on each test level which files to preload. So for the example that we're going to look at right now, there's a URL pointing to this. There's a preload uh, array of three files, the X library as well as the Sencha draw example. So let's first look at what that example does. So this is from the Sencha website where you have a Sencha logo that you can click and resize. So our goal right now is simply to verify that this logo can be resized with no errors or exceptions thrown. The lifecycle of a test begins when the start test method calls your callback. And this callback can be a simple anonymous function like you see here with only one argument. And this argument is the test instance itself. So the t variable here contains all the assertion methods like t.is, t.ok, etc. And it also contains uh, useful outputting uh, logging uh, methods like t.diag for just writing some content uh, to the test assertion grid. And you can then use uh, regular XJS code since this test is focused on XJS. So here you can see we're using x.select and we're also calling element get size here, uh, x get body and so on. The main area of interest in this test is t.drag. It allows you to drag elements in the DOM very easily. So you can see here we're passing the first element is the handle naturally. And then the second argument is not used. The third argument is a delta array, which tells the drag operation to drag 100 pixels to the right and 100 pixels down. And this is running in async mode, so you'll get a callback once the drag operation is complete. So now that we're inside this method, we can actually start performing assertions about the new state of the DOM. So we can ask the surface again for its new size, and then we can call the t.is to see if the new size is equal to the original plus those 100 that we dragged. And then the third parameter to the is method is the message to write in the assertion grid. And then we end each test by calling t.done. And that's about it. So let's see what this looks like. So here you can see in the assertion grid which actions were being simulated and the result of these actions. So we get a nice green check mark for each of our assertions. And this is how simple it is. Thanks for watching.